our day. Uh, who knows about the Wickford Art Association and that wonderful Wickford Arts Festival? You know, it's one of the best in the country. Yeah, we're going to talk about that. Starting things off, I'd like to introduce Judy Salvador. She is the gallery director for the Wickford Art Association. Wanted to make sure I got her title. Absolutely correct. So welcome, Judy. Thank you so much for joining Hi, us. Hi, come Thanks on in. Stand on our little piece of red okay. tape so we make sure we can get your beautiful face in the camera. Thank you. So thank you so much for joining us, especially on this kind of cruddy day. You brought some Oh, it's awful. Huh? I know, it's kind of gross out, but you brought some beautiful art to that we're going to share with everybody in a couple minutes. But let's start off by talking just a little bit about the history of the Wickford Art Association because there is some background to it. It's not all about the festival. No, it, well, it, I mean, it is but it isn't. We were founded in 1962 uh, by a group of artists that um, were located in Wickford and they wanted a way to show their art to the world. So they just went outside into the village and propped their paintings up against the buildings, against the cars, on the fences, hung them on outside of houses, and that's how the Wickford Art Festival was born. And they've been, we've been doing it ever since. That's we so cool. We have not skipped a year. That's absolutely amazing. And I was kind of surprised, I mean, maybe I shouldn't be surprised, but there are 400 members. Yes, we have 400 members of the Art Association. I'm sure you're always looking for more too, right? <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> but for a little tiny, we are a little tiny organization really in the grand scheme of things. There's so many arts organizations in Rhode Island. So we feel pretty fortunate to have 400 artists um, and community members um, that want to be a part of our organization. Yeah, no kidding. I mean, 400 seems like a lot just for you know, a, small, a, a small village. So that's pretty impressive. I know I was going through Try to things. remember everybody's name. No, not your job, not mine. <laughs> Although I do have to remember people. But yeah, that's it's very impressive. So uh, you're in the 55th year. It's coming up. Yeah. July is quickly approaching, even though it feels like January outside. Uh, and you have our, the call for artists is open now. Can you yes. tell us a little bit about the 55th year? So the uh, call for artists is open until April 15th, which we time it with tax day. So you remember, oh, my taxes are due, my application is due. Smart. Um, but you'd rather have your application <laughs> than have your taxes. In. You can um, get an extension <laughs> on your taxes. Right. Um, and uh, typically we have about 200 artists uh, in the festival. Um, it's fine art only. So fine art, uh, the definition of fine art is anything that is beautiful but non-functional. Okay. So it can hang on the walls, it could be a piece of sculpture, it just it can't be clothing, it can't be jewelry, it can't be a mirror, a lamp, a piece of pottery that you would, you know, eat food off of or something like that. Strictly non-functional art is in our festival, which makes our festival a little different than most art festivals around the area because a lot of them um, do have functional art. Yeah, that makes sense. So you're not really going to buy jewelry at right, the Wickford Art right. Festival. You're, you're going to look at fine art, something to right. put in your home to see its beauty. Right. So although if you're walking around the festival, because we are um, a street festival, you could, if you do want to go buy a piece of jewelry, you can go into one of the You can also find that. Right. <laughs> <laughs> so make that clarification right. possible. So this is, you're in your 55th year and you're looking for these artists. Is there anything special that's going to be happening? Um, as far as in, like an anniversary or something like that, I don't know. Um, you know, the fest every year the festival is different. It's never the same from year to year because the artists are constantly changing. And even though we do have some artists that have been coming for 40 years, wow. um, so you know you'll always see this artist here. Um, it, it's always changing. Maybe for some reason one artist can't make it one year because there's some other obligation or um, somebody gets sick or they have a wedding, you know, a variety of things. Um, and then there's just the constant change, you know, where um, new artists come in, other artists decide they don't want to do it anymore, because it is not an easy thing to do, do a festival. No. no. It's a lot of work, it's dedicating a whole weekend, being on site, and all the work that you need to do in uh, preparation for it as well. It's not easy. And it's always packed. <laughs> it's always packed. It's always packed. It which, is packed. Which is good. Um, so tell me a little bit about the festival and how it runs, how kind of you work things. So we have uh, a festival director this year, uh, Francie Christopherson, and anybody who's familiar with the festival will recognize her name because um, 
she has been the festival director for 20 years. She took a little hiatus and now she's back. Um, so she uh, is in charge of overseeing the festival. It's a juried festival, so not a anyone can apply, not everyone is accepted. Um, she's in charge of laying out the, the, the festival route, um, uh, speaking with all the artists. It, she's basically in charge of everything. Perfect. And let's talk a little bit about um, College Row and really how you go above and beyond to support these young artists as yeah, well. So, uh, part of our mission is to educate, inspire, and encourage. Um, so we uh, feel very strongly about educating and encouraging young artists um, and kind of um, helping them get out into the world. Uh, so last year we started College Row and it's working with um, colleges and universities in Rhode Island and the art department will come and exhibit on the uh, festival route and the students take their work and show it. And it's a great, if you are considering being an artist, it's a great way to kind of get a feel for what it's like. Because now you're showing your work, yeah. you're speaking with people who may be interested in buying your work or getting feedback or getting the, the, the one you always get. Oh, I could do that. Oh, <laughs> my goodness. Yeah, I know how that is. Yeah. So it's a great way to kind of, <laughs> yeah. it's a great way to kind of see what it's like to be an artist. Um, That's and fantastic. It's, and it's what a great, great exposure. Yeah. And it's great for your resume because you get to have your name in the program and you can put that cool. in your portfolio. Oh my goodness. And I bet what a good experience too, just being able to communicate with people coming up and asking questions yeah. and just getting that real life experience. Right. Just being on your right. feet all day. Right. <laughs> just having to stand it's out tough. there and talk right. to people all day. Just that alone right. experience and being able to add that uh, to your resume. Um, Let's talk about, because you are working with young artists and really working, uh, providing scholarships for people, let's talk about some young artists that you've had through um, the Whitford Arts. Uh, I just wanted to see if you had any questions popping up. Okay, so let's talk about some of the artwork that you've brought for us and through the Whitford Art Association. Uh, some. Tell me about your scholarship winner, just a little bit about the program. And so, before you scoot away, make sure you stay okay. so we can see you. I'm going to hold this, and you're going to tell okay. us. Okay, so this is... Uh, Tony's going to yell at us if you can't see it. Right? <laughs> and uh, each year, we, since the inception of the Wickford Art Festival, uh, a portion of the proceeds from the festival has gone to scholarships. Um, a few years ago, we went statewide, and uh, the competition is open to any public school. Uh, senior student who's going to college. Um, the, the schools uh, select a student that they feel best represents um, their art department and that student is uh, applies to uh, the scholarship fund okay. competition. So we picked we pick uh, three winners um, to receive twenty five hundred, fifteen hundred, and a thousand dollars. Oh, that's great! And we work with the Rhode Island Arts Education Association, and they pick the fourth winner for five hundred dollars. So it, Friday night's the ceremony. We give four awards out to high school seniors um, that we feel best uh, represent the arts, the uh, upcoming arts in Rhode Island. So this is our first place winner. His name is Remy Poisson, and he is from uh, Classical. Classical High School. And um, he, his work, his, the four pieces he um, this is submitted. ridiculous. It, uh, four of them are in charcoal, and the other one is in pencil. I took two of them with us. This one is of an ear. Oh, so they have submitted four. They have to submit five pieces. Five pieces to be as part of the um, competition. Wow! Um, so you can really get an idea of their body yeah. of work. Oh yeah, that's tough. Um, oh yeah, I mean the work. Every, in my opinion, everybody that submitted is a winner because they because they did it. All <laughs> amazing artists. So, but we have to pick a first place winner, and we have to pick a second and a third and a president's award and. Um, Remy got the first place, and his work is, um, it's amazing. So can I just give my opinion on this? When I, I know nothing about art, but I was shocked that someone did this by hand. To me, I th instantly just thought computer. A computer helped right. do this. But this is charcoal, and this is absolutely stunning. So and, and the ear, which is a very hard body part. Oh, my draw. goodness. And it looks 
So tell me what drew your eye to this. Because you obviously My know. My eye that. to the ear. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so let's look at the next one. Uh, well, actually, I wasn't one of the jurors, so it was the jurors that selected the work. Um, and they, they felt that this was a, just a magnificent piece, as well as this one. Okay, I mean, so let's show the next the field one. on this one is amazing. But still, you know more about art than I do. And I'm, I'm just absolutely blown away. I can barely, but it does it, barely you know, read my own name. You may not know a lot about, you know, maybe you can't talk about art or whatever, but you can still look at a piece and be wowed by it. And that sometimes is really all you need to know. That's true. Is That's great. You know, versus oh my god, that's terrible. And through this job, I'm learning so much more, which is nice. Right. And I like I like being able to see it and, and hold things. We're talking about <laughs> my job to hold things. Okay. And this is the same student. This is yep, Remy same as well. student. Both. It's again, it's charcoal, and uh, it's just this is just an amazing piece. And he's only eighteen. He's a senior. Eighteen. Senior in high school. Fantastic. So proud of this. Oh, I can actually see a little bit. Can you see this? Okay, Tony. Yeah, looks good. Okay. Um, so they'll be getting a... So Friday night is the award ceremony. It's free. It's open to the public. Anybody can come. Um, and they, the four students will be getting their awards. And uh, their teachers come and make the presentation. It's very emotional. I mean, we've had um, times where, say, three teachers are presenting to a student, and they're all in tears. Oh, my goodness. <laughs> I, yeah, if you do something this good, I would be in tears as well. Uh, so congratulations to all the winners. Because, like you said, I think if you're doing that kind of work, you have to be a winner just in general. Um, let's talk about what you have going on this month. So we talked about the call for entries is out there. So if you're interested in submitting to the Wickford Art Festival um, by tax day, so well, right. up until tax day, right. April 15th, you right. said. And the application's on our website, so you can download it. There's plenty of information there to help guide you through. But if anybody has any questions, just call the gallery. Okay, perfect. So that's in your hands now. Uh, mm -hmm. Let's talk a little bit about something that I'm fond of, and you're fond of as well. We have this in common. We are big animal lovers, and I actually know Treyer. Uh, she is very talented, and you have something going on that in the galleries, you have this going on all month long. You're working with animals, so tell us a little bit. Animals. Tell me all about the month of animals. So uh, when I took this job, one of the things on my bucket list was to have a month of animals. Um, so uh, I can dig <laughs> that. So um, in April, our exhibit uh, is a, a celebration of animals and art. It's called Fur, Feathers, and Fins. And cool. it's an open jury show. Anyone can enter it as long as it's fine art, follows our um, submission guidelines. And then in conjunction with the show, we have other events going on. Uh, that are animal related. So this is one of them. I am really, really excited about having Treyer at the gallery. Um, she is an author of eight books. They're all animal based. She's traveled all over the world photographing animals from um, in difficult positions to celebrating puppies. I mean, can't get any softer cushier than she's she's uh, actually I should email her and tell her to come on here and talk to us yeah <laughs> she's, she's phenomenal amazing. Um, so this is one of the books that she's done uh, shelter dogs and their story she's done uh, another book on shelter dogs from the Providence animal shelter down um, on the waterfront she's been to Puerto Rico and did a story on street dogs um, she's did a book on uh, nocturne animals uh, anim you know, animals of the night. Uh, she's working, I think, on right now, birds of prey. Um, she's really done a lot of work, and a lot of her work brings awareness to animals, and you know, maybe they're not so good situations. So, um, I'm really, really excited to have her in the gallery. And so, I, and like you said, it's not just about. What we said it's not just about the festival. You have continuous series happening right. all of the time and different artists being shown all the time and different projects, like you said, different events and happenings. Right. Um, another one that you have coming up is this animal. Another, another animal. animal, which this is really cool. I mean, who doesn't love dragons right mm -hmm. now? I mean, so popular. Uh, so tell us a little bit about this series so that you have So this is um, a one-day class. Um, some people really enjoy a one-day or a two-day class or workshop. Um, no, because it's really close you're, to the camera. You're in and out. You know, you, you do it and then you can go home and do what you want to do uh, as far as exploring the medium afterwards. So this is called the Sculpt a Dragon class. And we have an education coordinator, Felicia Tue. She plans amazing classes throughout the year. This is a one-day class on April 8th. Uh, the teacher, Christy Sherman, whose medium is uh, 
polymer clay. She's going to come in and show you how to sculpt and texture and, and work with uh, this kind of clay, how you can paint it, incorporate different materials. You can see she's got glass eyes oh, on here. So neat. Um, how to get these different finishes on it. Um, and you can do a dragon or you could do another animal, but you know, anyone who likes a dragon, um, this is a great class to take. Oh, and these are just so beautiful and so visually interesting and automatically you just want to yeah, touch them. You do. They just, you automatically just want to go, ooh, what is this? I want to feel this. Yeah. So, yeah, exactly. <laughs> you want to, when off do you, when do you get to pet a dragon? Um, and I know, one, dragons are so popular right now, whether mm -hmm. it's in TV or movies. So if kids would be interested in getting one of these, you know, like, oh, here's a little present for you. Right. Um, or just learning how to make something like this. Uh, would be cool Christmas ornament, something like that, mm -hmm. you know, just to hang yep. out on your tree or just something to have around. So that's really neat. Um, how much are the workshops? Uh, this the one, um, I think, uh, I, to be honest with you, I don't remember, what, and I want to say what the price yeah, is. Yeah, well, I think look on the website. Yeah, right. It's on the website. Perfect. You can register online for the classes, and um, there's a complete listing of all our classes uh, on our website. So tons of stuff going on. And one more thing that we do want to make sure that we get in before you do have to go, because there's so much going on <laughs> with our Art Association. Uh, and, and this was neat. I, didn't know, I did not know about this. This is so cool. Um, so we have a book that I'm totally flipping through and not showing you. But tell me a little bit about this. So this is Poetry and Art, and this is the fifth year of doing the show. Uh, how it works is the artist of jur uh, artwork is juried in by a juror, and then the poets are juried in by another juror. So the artwork that has been juried in is then assigned to a, poem, a poet, and the poem, the poet, um, I get what you writes... Mean. A, po a poem in response to the artwork. Then in September we exhibit the artwork and the poem side by side in the gallery. We produce, uh, we have a woman that is a book designer, we produce this book and if you're accepted to the exhibit now you can say you're, you've been published. Which is so fantastic and so meaningful for people yes. to be able to say they've yes. been published. And it is very, um, the night of the opening, the poets and the artists don't know who have like the poet doesn't know who the artist is, and the artist doesn't know who got. Oh, they don't know. So they don't know until the opening night. Oh, that's so, so cool! On <laughs> opening night, they get to meet each other, and it's it's another one of those very emotional nights where you see, um, you know, if you're an artist and you see someone uh, took how they see your artwork and wrote a poem in response to it, it it can be. Very, you know, chills down your spine sort of feeling. Oh my goodness, yeah, I can see how that would be emotional. Uh, and so the call for entries for this it, is... This is open now. Okay. Uh, entries are due by May, th uh, May 10th. Okay. And so, again, everything's on our website. Great. And so if you're interested in doing this, just make sure you reach out to them by May 10th. Uh, because how cool is that? Yeah. You can be in a book. You yeah. can make some new friends, some new yeah. artists, some new poet friends. Right. Oh, really neat. Do you have to be a member of the Whitford Art Association to, to do something like this? No. No, it's open to the whole world. That's really neat. Yeah. That's neat. And, and what a great way to inspire the creative process yes. as well. Yes. Uh, that's really neat. It's different. Judy, thank you so much for joining us. This is really fun. Yeah, it was. This has been really fun. Uh, so if you are interested in the Wickford Art Association, you can visit their website. Again, the call for entries for the Wickford Art Festival uh, is April 15th, so make sure to get that in. Uh, and it's all happening. It's all going down in July, 55th year. Yes, that's July so 8th and 9th. That's exciting.